Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning. Uh, I'm Laureen Garrod. I'm director of the television division at Remedem. So I hope you're having all a very good mid TV. And this is one of, well, one of my favorite sessions coming up uh, Women in Tech and Media. So, and I see some guys here, so that's good too. <laughs> so, start with a few facts. We have a star lineup here. I'm really very proud of that. Um, so, we have. Um, a few statistics here that just to put the context on things. Women watch more TV than men. I don't know if you knew that. And spend more time online. And 55% of mobile social network users are women. And even more importantly, 82% of, of the consumer spending is controlled by women. Now that's a big fact. And uh, that means that influences, there's a big shift in influence. And the question today is, in fact, what, what challenges are women facing as they shoot for greater influence here in the tech and media industry? So we're going to take a look at that. Asta Valayas, where are you? There you are, <laughs> is our moderator. Thank you very much. Asta is a digital pioneer. She's a digital developer, a transmedia producer, former CEO of Zentropa Interactive, and now is in charge of an international production uh, for a uh, co company for commercial, arts, and education. She also runs a research center in Malmö uh, in Sweden for digital projects, uh, well, research for a lot of things, I'm sure. Uh, so we'll find out more about that, and welcome, and let's, let's hear it all. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Thank you. And good morning, everybody. You had a coffee? Good, so have we. This is the most interesting panel I ever led, so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. We got very professional people from kind of every market and everything that's growing and interesting right now. And we'll start with you, Kim. Who are you? Hi, my name is Kim Moses and I'm here from Hollywood, um, California. And um, I am an, a director and a, a producer and a writer and a developer of television and I work at the intersection of television and digital media. And my expertise is I'm one of the few women in Hollywood who works at that intersection and I encourage all of you women to step forward. Hello everybody, I'm Stéphanie Hospital. Uh, I work at Orange where I take care of one of the division in charge of digital. So I mean, uh, at the intersection of the advertising, digital and uh, corporate careers world. Um, and I've got the chance to be in this industry for many years, I guess. Um, my name is Jesse Draper. I run a talk show called The Valley Girl Show, like Silicon Valley, although now I'm based in LA. Um, and uh, we interview entrepreneurs and startups and CEOs in a really kind of lighthearted, approachable way. Um, I, I feel like I've, I'm sort of at the intersection of, of media and technology as well, and it's a, really, um, it's a really exciting place to be. Hello, my name is Françoise Laborde, I'm French. I used to be a journalist, and now I'm a member of the CSA, which is the Conseil Supérieur de l'Audiovisuel, the French Council for Audiovisuel. We try to regulate a little bit this sector. And um, I'm also a chair of uh, an association called Pour les femmes dans les médias, which purpose is to help women to take all their place in the media because the thing, the feelings that we can get better. Thank you. Thank you, Francoise. I think that we actually just start with taking the temperature of the different places you come from, kind of what you see and what has been happening the last couple of years. So Kim, from your point of view, trends and movements in women in technology and media. Sure. Um, you know, in the United States, women are the rocket fuel of e-commerce. They drive the economy. We're the routers and the amplifiers of social web. We're the loyal viewers of long-form television uh, storytelling, much more so than men. And today's women owns the role as the influencer more than ever. However, the top decision makers of television programming are still predominantly men, <coughs> excuse me, in charge of what's going to go on the air and how it's going to go on the air. And 80 percent, and you can speak to this more, I'm sure, but 80 percent of what's uh, happening in the digital space is still being driven by men in the but United Kim, States. But why, why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because women are the consumers of all of this content and we spend all of the money. So if we're the ones who are the amplifiers and the routers, then we certainly should be the developers, the programmers, and create the content. My feeling is that if you bridge all of this with women and you put them in the driver's seat, 
of content and distribution, we can harness the power of the world um, and really rock it. So more women in power <laughs> and we make more money. We like to hear that. <laughs> Stephanie, what do you think? I think that um, digital uh, and advertising are fantastic areas of development for women. And we have more and more women entrepreneurs. I mean, in France, I mean, it's, uh, it's very convenient to be entrepreneurs. However, when we look at uh, what happened in the, in, in the corporation, I mean, we see not so many uh, women at the top level. And you need really to have uh, CEOs uh, uh, sponsoring, being champion of women in big corporations to enable women to, uh, to go and to step up. So um, uh, it's quite uh, mixed, but I think we also, as women, have our uh, responsibility over that. And uh, we need to, to, to be uh, clearly uh, maybe more encouraging the young women to be uh, daring and daring to take jobs, daring to take responsibilities. Um, yeah, you know, I think that women are, um, I mean, we obviously are spending a lot more. I am definitely guilty of shopping online and shopping just in general, and I feel like girls do that a lot more. I actually had a great conversation with um, the president of Time Warner Cable Media, and she, uh, Joan Hogan Gilman, and she actually brought me in to and interviewed me for her, um, for the entire company to hear what kind of things I liked to watch on TV because they're trying to target their advertising more towards women. Um, so we talked about everything from like Starbucks to how car companies could be more appealing to women. Um, I was like, well, you know, I'd love a little thing for my lipstick. I don't think they're gonna do that, but, um, but uh, yeah, I think, I mean, people obviously need to pay more attention to women and I think we're trying to figure out, you know, like my generation, I mean, I speak for, you know, the kind of like generation Y, um, we're tr you know, we're trying to look up to all of you guys and figure out how, how do we have it all? How do you do this? How, you know, and um, Cheryl Sandberg's a huge, you know, someone I idolize and I just, I love that she's putting herself out there like that. Um, yes, my, my feeling is that um, in, in France it's getting worse. I mean, I don't know if it's because we are a country of chauvinistic male, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, for, for me, um, I'm going to be 60 this year, thank you. And um, I think it was easier for me than it is now for younger. And um, th this is very, very, very brutal for me. And um, what I feel is that we have something to do, and this is why we made this association to help and to, to monitor and, and to be a really, uh, because it's, for me, it's not only a question of, of market, which is a uh, point very important, but as a member also of the French uh, Council for, uh, for um, Audiovisuel, I mean, it's a matter of democracy. I mean, I cannot stand to live in a country where 50% of the, of the French are women. <laughs> don't, don't forget that, <laughs> boys. And, and, um, and we don't have all our part on, on the ruling the country. Well, for me, it's a point of democracy first. I come from a country of chauvinistic women. I'm from Denmark. <laughs> and uh, I came from St. Trope originally, got headhunted by Last Van Trier, the Danish director, when I was so young. And then I started working with tech development and interactive experiences. And at St. Trope, I think at that point, 80% of the producers were women. And you had girls on 26 running the same budgets as guys of 60. And I had no problem. Uh, it was only when I came out into the field and I start seeing who gets the funding. And I actually think that, for me, it's, this is gonna sound really horrible, but I work with user-centered design, so I design to the user, uh, and I actually need mixed teams. I need a programmer who's female, and I need a programmer who's male. They're gonna give me different things. And I prefer to work in this mixed teams because I make th they make better results. So from a production point of view, and kind of getting all you can out of your production, I actually need that. So I'm kind of, I want them in there so they can work for me in 10 years. <laughs> but um, let's go to challenges and barriers. But actually first, Francoise, we're talking about numbers all the time. Can you show us some numbers from France? Yes, uh, we have some, some figure, uh, w what we, we reach in, in CSA about the French paradox. Can, can we launch it? Yes, can you see them? For example, uh, women consumption of, of media, uh, 56, you see the figure? Oh yes, mm -hmm. 56 on TV audience, 
of 49 on radio, 53 touch pod, 50 internet users. And um, women represent not 50, but 52% of the French population. And 50% of young girls are post created when there is 37 of young boys. And you see on the other end, what we have on the sixth survey made by the CSA, only 30, 37 of people on TV screen are women. Um, we, we are talking about 30 in news, for example, when there are experts on the TV, there is only 30% of, of, of women. It's the same on fiction, it's the same on entertainment, only they are here just to, to show the, the, you know, like you see on the second, uh, on the second picture. And uh, it, it's very difficult for, me, for women to play lead characters on, on, the, on the TV, uh, especially. Um, we had several um, intervention on, on the on the CSA, especially. I am in charge of the young in the CSA, so I'm very much concerned about the image of, for example, of a sexualizing of little girls, which is a, a purpose for us. But maybe we talk later on, on the woman yes, images. And um, the, the thing is that I just want to say that since um, two. 2008, the French government has been working on the woman image in media, and that uh, we on, on the CSA, we have more role to, to do now. Thank you. Actually, I know, Stephanie, you also have some numbers? Yeah, I mean, just want to, to come back with the numbers on employment. If we look at the digital sector, I mean, um, in, in France at least, um, over the last uh, three years, 14% of the uh, employment created were created in the digital sectors. So it's not only a, a dem democracy issue, an image issue, but it's also an economic issue for women. If you want to be independent, if you want to have a job, I mean, it's better to be in this digital industry as there would be job creation and uh, it will be a way of uh, being employed. So um, clearly for that, uh, we're seeing, and uh, we, are, we are launching every year a survey at Orange on the job employment uh, for the, the tech ladies. And the, the good news is that it's progressing. I mean, we have more and more uh, women, I mean, taking uh, uh, and uh, being educated in the tech sectors. But uh, however, it's not enough. And um, if we want really to, to be uh, working in this uh, digital, uh, digital media industry, uh, we need to encourage uh, young women to uh, step into uh, uh, their um, uh, engineers, uh, development uh, studies to be able to uh, to uh, to work in this industry that tomorrow will be fueling the the growth and the employment. So how is this going to happen? Kim, what's the challenges? What's the barriers? Give us good or bad. What do you think? Well, the barriers are, of course, what we've been talking about, which is women are able to get to a certain level and then you know they hit this glass ceiling. I, I hear about it in France. I know it's true in the United States. I don't. Th I, I think by the time you get to the point where uh, you know your generation gets to the point where they should, you know, they hit that glass ceiling. I'm hoping that the ceiling will be shattered because you probably don't feel it yet. But um, you know, one of the things that I just wanted to use as a leave behind is that the networking of women can be so incredibly powerful. There's a woman named Pamela Reichman who writes for the New York Times who just put out a book that comes out on May 16th in the United States and two weeks later it's by McGraw-Hill. And uh, you know she actually features, uh, and I'll talk about this in one second and I'll do it quickly, she features these dinner groups who are networking um, and some of the women up in Silicon Valley, not the expected ones like Cheryl because she's got her own amplifier, but women that you don't know about who are doing this networking, which is basically, and I started it three years ago where I invited 12 women who I did not know, I wanted to get to know who were leaders in the industry to come together at the table and just talk and share strategy. And it was a very successful dinner and we've done it every month for three years. And every month we invite an, two more women who we don't know who are very powerful in the business or in some business that is interesting to us. And it's remarkable in this group of networking where we have connected with about 80 very powerful women all over the United States. And whenever we go to do something, we call one another and we help each other get through the next door. And it's incredibly valuable. So I encourage you to go out and do the same thing 
Start your own networking group with women you don't know that you admire, who think that who you think can be helpful and useful to you and other women. And uh, I would start that tomorrow. I think that's a great. That's just so important. It really is important to network. Um, and. Uh, I, I want to talk about challenges a little bit because speaking from the technology perspective, and uh, you know, I may get in trouble for trouble for saying this, but the press is tearing the women in technology to pieces. You know, uh, Sheryl Sandberg's been. I heard in the UK, she her book was just like. Can you just tell people very shortly the case if they don't know it? Oh yeah, so Sheryl Sandberg, uh, you know, is speaking out about just trying to kind of, she's trying to reinvigorate this women's movement essentially and um, just encourage more women to lean in and step up to the table and really take control of their career and you can have it all. Um, and uh, in the UK I heard that her um, book, her book reviews were just terrible and they were just, you know, and I'm reading the book and I love it and I highly recommend everyone read it. It's called Lean In. Um, but then Marissa Myers who took over Yahoo uh, she took over Yahoo right before she was about to have a baby. So everyone is judging every single decision she makes. They're like, what? She, she eliminated telecommuting to work. So you're not allowed to work from home anymore at Yahoo. And, um, and she just, everyone thought that was just a terrible idea. And they're like, you're not a normal working mother. You don't understand, blah, blah, blah. You have all this help. And I think the press needs to be a little more encouraging. And I actually said this on a panel with a guy who works at Mashable, which is a, a business news site that I work with. And he, they wrote an article. So I'm hoping someone out here encourages women in technology. So maybe someone's a journalist out here um, instead of tearing them to pieces. But I think that you know the press needs to be a little more supportive. I don't know why they love to tear the smart girls down. I, I completely agree with you. I'm also a techie girl, and there's, I see so few of us. I, ha I have so many young female followers I didn't know about, but they don't dare to take the last step. And they don't know. They think you need to know how to do it before you do it, but you only learn to do it by doing it. So That's for me, it's, yeah, it's, it's about courage. It's not about that you already know, every single day, every person on this earth does something they're not comfortable with. But we do have one thing, and guys, I'm so sorry, it's not to say that you don't have it, you have other things, you're much more focused. That's a problem, by the way. Yeah, you see, I got sidetracked. Uh, but actually, what we do have is, we have courage when something is difficult and dangerous. I don't know if it's a sexistic or biological thing, I'll get in trouble now, Jesse. Uh, but we actually are very good at being courageous when we think the team is in danger. So a woman running a digital production, facing, we might remove your budget. This is not the user experience I would like. No, you're not the target group, but um, you give me the money. Uh, all these kind of things, I see very good protection of the team. I see very high loyalty. Uh, and that's not to say that men are not loyal. I'm just saying I see that in the digital female producers. Um, so it's there, grab your courage. We, everybody of us tremble at least once a day, isn't that right? At least once a day we do something we're not sure is right and we are really scared, but we have to do it. Francoise, I, it looked like you had some. Uh, uh, oh, I, I, I agree. Uh, I, 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 uh, I said that I used to be a journalist and uh, w when I'm looking now how the, 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 this field um, changed, um, it, it's obvious that there is a l more and more um, girls in the, in the, for example, what, what we call grand reportage or, or surviving a war, a war field. And there is less, less guys and more girls but what happened is that uh, at the same time the the, the 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 job of being a grand reporter is getting less prestigious and the guys are getting in the hierarchy of of the redaction which is um, which is uh, symbolistic of of what happened when when women are getting more involved in in such field and what is my my concern today is that for example in the french media i feel that there is not enough women on the hierarchy and that it's getting less and worse than it used to be because when i start as a journalist we used to have some 
um, some some image of of woman very famous, very uh, very uh, empower, uh, very uh, important in in the, in the in the in the French press. And uh, I'm not going to to to, to quote uh, I know, Simone de Beauvoir or or, or or Francois Giroud, but we used to have I mean those the, 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 those image, and then now we have less and less women like that, and this is why I think it's important to to say that you 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 can do it. I mean, and it's important to say to the young who want to to be in the yarke, which is very for me, it's important because we don't. We can't have gender equality if people, if women don't have all the, 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 the place they have to be in the hierarchy. And I also think that leads us actually to talent development and education. I just want to say to you that the UN is together with the United Nations, together with MIP, is doing a global countdown on education. So there's a lunch here later. Yes. But I think talent development is extremely interesting. Talent development, girls? Sorry, ladies. Uh and for that, I mean, I think it's especially in big corporation. I mean, it's important that the, the CEO be uh, sponsor, sponsoring this initiative. At Orange, we have the chance to have a CEO who, who um, likes women, and he has decided that 35% of the executive should be women. And he is putting in place with the, all the, the resources department um, program to, uh, to help uh, and educate women. Uh, monitoring program from other women in the company to help young women to step up, uh, and is, uh, this is key. If you if you want to, to have uh, this happening in the company, I mean, at the top management, the top management needs to be convinced that there's room for women. It needs also to uh, to adapt uh, the way the company is working to women. Um, uh, some. Uh, uh, re uh, meetings that you begin at eight are maybe not possible, so uh, very late meetings. So it's also a way of uh, accepting that you need to be flexible uh, in the way you manage your time. And it's also for women, uh, when we have the chance to, to be uh, managing, it's also accepting that uh, we will favor be uh, pushing some young women to take responsibility and help them to, to be in the, in the company. And at the end of the day, I think it's more efficient. I mean, you, we all, all have seen this McKinsey report uh, uh, explaining that when you have more than three women into uh, a management committee, I mean, the, uh, the efficiency of the team is, is, is more uh, than when you have only men or uh, only women. So diversity is good. Yeah, that's right. Jesse, how many female entrepreneurs do you see out there? That is, whoa, <laughs> just hit myself in the face. Um, that is a really good question because, um, so I've been doing the show for about four seasons. It really took off about a year and a half ago. And um, the first season I realized I interviewed out of 25 um, male CEOs, I interviewed three women. So I quickly realized I needed to make <clears throat> an extra effort to get women on the show. But it's, it's hard to find them and a lot of them, um, and. Um, I'd love to hear if you guys disagree with this. A lot of them, I think, are afraid to put themselves yeah. out there and in the way that my show does, which is I try to get you to kick back and relax and be yourself and really humanize. I've really tried to like humanize kind of the people in the business world and technology world and some, especially the you know corporate CEOs, are very um, calculated and you know re PR rehearsed is what I say, um, and so some of them are afraid to be themselves. They feel like they almost have to be a guy and can't have feelings. Um, so it's, I feel like that's another reason it's hard. And that's why I love Sheryl Sandberg because she's putting herself out there. She's like, I'm guilty of everything else a woman is, is guilty of. And um, I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. And she's, she's willing to, she's like, I'm a mom. I got to put my kids to bed. And I, you know, she's just speaking out about all the normal things that women um, do. Kim, I know that you have an initiative, a STEM initiative in the United States. Yeah, I do. I um, have got, come together with Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, to create a STEM. Uh, does everybody know what STEM is? That's science, technology, engineering, and math uh, initiative to bring young girls, keep young girls at the table in the United States because they, they start leaving those areas uh, their interest from the ages of nine through through uh, 
14 is when they start to drop away. And it's so important with the way the world is developing that you need those skills. And that's where the job market is going. And it's predominantly men right now. And the United States is bringing a lot of people from outside of the country to fill those jobs because we don't have them for men or particularly for women. So this initiative gives an opportunity for young girls to digitally uh, engage with these different areas and hone on up their skills and connect them, put them on a track to go to college and get careers. And the way it, it does it is through uh, the technology, through the education, but most importantly it does it through one of my expertise, which is entertainment, so that they're solving mysteries by using these skills. And I'm very excited about it, and it's uh, launching in, um, in July of this year. Françoise. Oh, it's called Click. Yes, yeah, called Click. Françoise, you also have an initiative about. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, know if it's uh, Sarah. Can we see the slide? Yeah. Uh, those are, uh, uh, well, those uh, um, question that, that we had on on the the the, the, the other. Yes, this one. No, this one. The, the one before. Excuse me with the picture. Yeah. This is where I, I, I try to, to make a regulation because, for example, as I'm in charge of, of, the, of the young people, uh, we are very much concerned about what, what the show, uh, that, that show the over sexualizing of, of young women or what we saw, for example, in the picture before. Uh, on the um, on the video clip of certain uh, certain video music, um, which is also one of my concern is the what we call tele reality, because sometimes uh, there is um, on on those type of show um, image so um, uh, how can I uh, so um, Negative, yeah, so negative of what what young people do. It's not only women, you know. It's just to putting together uh, uh, guys with nothing in the head and girls with nothing in the head, and just concern about what the hair or whatever, or, what, what, or the lipstick or. What. So we are also concerned about that in the CSA, and uh, um, I told last last week that we are having a um, survey on those. Um, on, on those program, and maybe if the, it's if it's too much degradé, degradant, uh, we may ask to be uh, after 10 o'clock p.m. because uh, we we thought that we cannot present violence as an, an issue. Whatever we have is uh, the 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 those awareness uh, which shows that what we do since. 2008, I'm a little mixed, it's coming here. Uh, um, w the French government created a committee on women image on, on media, uh, which I work on with uh, another member of, of the CSA. And um, we are going to have uh, more priority, especially uh, with the uh, High Committee on Male-Female Parity, and uh, we have on the 1st of March 10 measure uh, in favor of gender equality. And uh, one of those uh, 10 measure was to uh, give to the CSR more power to ensure equal representation. And uh, we have here uh, on the next one, practical action. Uh, we uh, suggest um, to the French parliament new pro provision to enlarge the CSR power. For example, we ha we hope to have more power to um, to to uh, manage those images who give um, an image uh, degradation of of the woman on the on the TV. Because, for example, now on the French law, you have power, for example, in uh, human di dignity, and we have we want to go further than the human dignity. Francoise, uh, I have to wrap up now. Uh, yes. Is that okay with you? Yes. Or is okay. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I think, where can people find the information if they want to see more oh, about this program? The, 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 there is a website on the CSA, and you will have all those all on the website. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up, uh, so we have time for a couple of questions. Also, these very valuable experts will be available by, by the coffee the next 10, 20 minutes. I just want to tell you that... Uh, there is, oh, 
Let's see if I can find it. There is hope out there. I met the youngest robotic designer in November. Her name is Erin Kennedy. She designs girl, uh, girl uh, sorry. She designs bird robots. She's 22 and invited her to a conference where also BBC's prototyping department were featured. These are some other girls coming out now. They wanted to replace the Barbie doll. This, girl, this uh, doll is programmable. In its head is a chip, an Arduino chip, that's programmable hardware. So you can actually program your doll to do what you want. It's a 3D printed doll, so you go in on a website, you design the doll, you print it out so it looks exactly like you want. A lot of girls give them really long ears or legs that are extremely huge or whatever they like. And then you can program your girl. Um, so that's a new toy coming out. The two female inventors only did this to teach young girls to code. So we do have some very interesting, very young talent out there. And I just want to say to the funders, make sure that you put the money equally, because then the producers will make sure there's women in the production. Money is always a very good argument. For the guys out there, remember, behind every great woman is a supporting man. We take more shit out there, so we actually need you. And uh, to the mothers, teach your daughters courage and code. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you. you to thank the panel. You, Asta. Thank you. Sarah, do we have time for one question, or do we go to coffee? Coffee, and you can ask them all you want. I talk with them for half an hour before. They're extremely interesting.